Hello, and welcome to another CyberHer video. Today, we will be talking about cybersecurity and how to stay safe and secure online. So, to start out, we have our IoT devices, and that stands for the Internet of Things. From this diagram, we can see that there are many more IoT devices than just our phones. Because there are so many devices, we need to learn to be safe with what we have. There are several ways to secure and protect your devices, but today we are going to be talking about passwords and accidental information sharing, which involves physical security. Here we have a few examples of bad passwords and good passwords. It's important for us to have good passwords so that people don't hack into our accounts and steal important information. The passwords on the left might seem nice because it's easy for you to memorize. The issue with these passwords is that they're also easy for me to memorize, and you don't want anyone to be able to guess or know your password. The passwords on the right are a lot better because those aren't something I'm likely to guess. A good tip for making a password would be to use three or four random words for it. It also helps when you use special characters. It makes it more fun looking and it keeps it even more secure. Next, we're going to talk about phishing and smishing. Phishing is when someone sends a fake email to you trying to get information. Smishing is when someone texts you trying to get information. We're going to go over a phishing email in a second. But first, here are some tips to keep you safe from both of these things. When in doubt, throw it out. Just delete the email or text. Examine the from email address. Usually, if it's really long, it's not from your friend or a company. Don't respond to strangers. If you don't know them, don't reply. Hover over links to see if they actually go where they say they're going to go. Don't let logos fool you. Anyone can copy and paste them off the internet. Lastly, check your privacy settings. So here we have an example of a phishing email. At first, it seems really cool. Like, oh my goodness, Taylor's asking me to go to her concert. But if you look closer, there are a few things that don't seem right. Mentioned before, let's look at who this email is from. Hmm, it doesn't look like it's from Taylor. The email starts with the name Katie instead. Another thing to notice is that in the email, they say to respond soon. Phishing emails generally try to create a sense of emergency, so be on the lookout for that. Lastly, the email asks for a credit card, which you should never email to anybody. From these three things, I now know that this is not Taylor emailing me. Now we're going to move on to accidental information sharing. When someone is trying to get into your account, and they click on forgot password, this is something they are probably going to see. So we need to be careful of the information we put online. When you think of it, where are you online? If you want, you can take a second and pause this video to talk about places you share your information online. An example of this would be I have an Instagram account, and that has a few things about me on it. When you're online, these are a few of the things you should not be sharing at all. So your full name, home address, phone number, email address, school name, where you're at, or where you're going to be. It's important to keep this information private for not only online safety, but for physical safety as well. Here are a few examples of accidental information sharing. The one with the school buses almost okay, but on the building you can see Bullwood Public School, which is bad because it's showing where this person goes to school. The bottom right picture is bad because it clearly shows an address on it. Lastly, the top picture is bad because on the girl's shirts you can read South Brunswick, and if I had to guess, I would say that's where they go to school. That's what accidental information sharing is, when you give away information about yourself without meaning to. So here are a few ways to stay safe from that. Number one, understand you can't control information after it's been shared. Once it's out there, it's out there. It doesn't matter if you've deleted it or not. 
Next, don't talk to strangers online. Also, recognize the internet isn't true. I bet I could find a website about how fish can fly if I looked. Be sure to check on your privacy settings and make sure your microphone is off. Turn off location sharing. And lastly, continue learning about stuff like this. The internet is always changing, so there's always going to be new things we can learn about it. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the apps on your phone. When I was describing privacy settings earlier, this is what I was talking about. In this picture, it's talking about all the things this app needs turned on. You can see it says camera, microphone, SMS, which is text messages. In the bottom right corner, it says open settings. And here you can turn all of that off, and the app should still run just fine. Also, it's a good idea to go through your phone every once in a while and delete apps you aren't using, because some of them will still be taking information. And that is all we have. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more, we have a ton of resources at cyberher.org. Thank you for watching.